As we showed you, Hillary Clinton and Democratic leaders spent Wednesday calling on their party to unite behind Donald Trump for the good of the country. In her concession speech, Clinton reminded supporters the American dream is big enough for everyone and that fighting for what's right is always worth it. This is not the outcome we wanted or we worked so hard for. And I'm sorry that we did not win this election for the values we share and the vision we hold for our country. We have seen that our nation is more deeply divided than we thought. But I still believe in America, and I always will. And if you do, then we must accept this result and then look to the future. This loss hurts, but please never stop believing that fighting for what's right is worth it. To all the women, and especially the young women, who put their faith in this campaign and in me, I want you to know that nothing has made me prouder than to be your champion. Nancy Cortez is in Chappaqua, New York. So Nancy, you were at the Javits Center and then in the room during Hillary Clinton's concession speech. Describe for us what it is that you actually witnessed with these many Clinton supporters. Uh, what you saw, Elaine, was the combination of shock and devastation, uh, and each of those magnified the other uh, because this was simply a blow that no one saw coming, including those inside the campaign. Uh, this wasn't a situation where uh, they felt 90% chance we win, 10% chance we lose. They really uh, literally believed that they were on their way to the White House. And so uh, there were so many emotions for these staffers as they watched Hillary Clinton speak today. After uh, talking to them after her speech, uh, you know, they said things like uh, how they couldn't believe the strength it took for her to get up there on the stage uh, and be calm and magnanimous at a time when they were so emotional and all of those emotions were being reflected back at her as she spoke, seeing them uh, weeping in the crowd. Uh, beyond that, you know, their own futures are now cloudy. These are all people who thought that they were heading, uh, for the most part, to positions in the White House or in the administration. And in a blink of an eye, uh, suddenly they're not quite sure what their own next moves are. And so that's quite unsettling. Uh, it's, you know, it's a reality of, of working in politics. You kind of uh, rise and fall based on uh, where your candidate uh, ends up. But uh, nonetheless, it doesn't make it any more, um, uh, any more comfortable knowing that that is just the way that it goes. Uh, and then beyond that, uh, you know, so many women, particularly young women uh, who were there today and were also at the Javits Center, were so devastated because they were convinced that they were going to see the first woman president elected. Uh, and that was a really momentous achievement for them. Uh, and particularly for, for young volunteers, young staffers who haven't really been involved in any kind of a political loss before, let alone one of this magnitude, it, it you know, it, it really was a, uh, you know, really was a, a major blow that they are still recovering from. I wonder, Nancy, are campaign staffers any closer to understanding what happened? They are. Uh, they see that clearly they um, underestimated the depth of disillusionment among white working class voters, particularly uh, in the Midwest, hard hit by manufacturing losses um, and, and the loss of the coal industry. When you talk about Western Pennsylvania, uh, turned off, frankly, uh, by by the Clinton legacy at this point, uh, turned off by all the talk of Clinton's email server. Um, and, and, you know, that they just needed more than uh, the, the voter base that they were aiming for in those particular states, in states like, um, you know, in states like Nevada that had a large Latino population, they had other voters to draw on. But in a state like Wisconsin, which is a largely white population, they needed to do a better job winning over those working class white voters. It's the same thing that Hillary Clinton struggled with in the primary election. Uh, Bernie Sanders uh, really trounced her in the Midwest because of this issue of trade, the idea that other countries are stealing American jobs. And uh, it was just a very difficult issue for her because she has been so supportive of trade deals in the past and because her husband was the face of NAFTA. 
And finally, Nancy, in addition to having followed the Clinton campaign all these many months, you're also our CBS News congressional correspondent. So let me ask you about House Speaker Paul Ryan. He's been at odds with Donald Trump for so much of his campaign. He actually, though, the speaker did credit him with saving GOP majorities in the House and Senate. He said that they're going to work closely to enact uh, President Trump's policies. How does Speaker Ryan move forward from here? Well, uh, plain and simple, these two men need each other. So uh, it's in their best interest to bury the hatchet for Donald Trump. Uh, he's got all kinds of complicated relationships on Capitol Hill. Lots of Republicans who either openly opposed him uh, or simply wouldn't say that they were backing him. So uh, he could use uh, the support of someone like Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan uh, sees the writing on the wall. He sees that uh, clearly there was something about Donald Trump that the electorate warmed to. And as his predecessor, Assessor John Boehner used to say, you're not a leader if everyone else is marching in the other direction. So Paul Ryan needs to figure out how to sort of get right with the right in his party um, because he's going to have his own difficulty just getting reelected as speaker. There are a number of uh, conservative members of his conference who believe that he abandoned Donald Trump uh, and think that he should not remain as the head of the Republicans in the House. So I do think that they will work together, especially because, uh, you know, while there are a lot of things they disagree about, there's a lot of things uh, that they have uh, that they that they have uh, common ground on. And so those are probably things that they'll try to tackle first. Doesn't mean that this is going to be an easy relationship. It doesn't mean that things are all smooth sailing from here, uh, but they uh, but it's worth it to both of them to get along. All right. Nancy Cordes, thank you so much. You're welcome, Elaine.